Good morning, dear friends. We are about to begin this Mass of Thursday, the ninth week of Easter. In today's Mass, we continue to pray for each other. We pray that God's blessings, God's love, and God's peace will rest in every heart. We pray for our country in this moment of great anxiety and national distress. We pray and ask that God may help us recognize the pain in every heart and understand the anxiety in every spirit and seek understanding among us to better heal our country. I also would like to pray for our leaders around the world, pray especially for our leaders here in our own country, that God may help us understand the right tone of voice, the right composure, just so that we could seek for greater unity of persons in our country. I invite everyone to pray at this time. We need to have a country where no one is oppressed where no one feels isolated, where we all work together to build and sustain the greatest nation on earth. I pray, continue to pray too for those who are sick, especially those who are battling coronavirus. Pray and ask God to help heal. Pray for our doctors and our nurses and all those who are risking their lives every day. And finally, I'd like to pray for our police department and pray for those who are protesting at this time, that God may keep everyone safe. Let us now go to God with our prayers. Our opening hymn today is, Holy God, we praise thy name. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim, all in heaven above adore thee, infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, we gathered here today to celebrate the sacrament of God's love. And in this Mass, we will pray for the intentions we have, but I'd also like to offer your intentions. So I invite you to bring your concerns and your prayers to God at this time. To prepare ourselves to offer this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, for our lack of Christian love, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, for our inability to hear and understand each other, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, for our inability to see and perceive the struggles of each other, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. And may he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant, that, and grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, 
Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is, such is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everyone and everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny his own. Remind people of these things and charge them before God to stop disputing about words. This serves no useful purpose since it harms those who listen. Be eager to present yourself as acceptable to God, a workman who causes no disgrace, imparting the word of truth without deviation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist, teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are my God, my Savior. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his ways. Teach me your ways, O Lord. All the parts of the Lord are kindness and constancy towards those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you with your spirit, reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, this is a very critical juncture in our national life. And we all need to take a step backwards 
provide enough distance to see what is unfolding right now. If we don't, we might miss what I consider a, a new revelation because something is showing itself to every one of us. But as always, the closer you get to something, the less you are able to see it for what it is. You need to take some distance. And the first, the response to psalm says to us, teach me your ways, O Lord. That means we will take the posture of students students willing to be informed to be instructed to be guided to greater truth when you are a student the underlying recognition is that i still need to know more and there is someone who knows better who is going to help me or maybe not know better but at least I'm willing to learn something that I do not know at the time or willing to improve myself more. And it doesn't matter how much you know, this is a moment to see yourself as a student because there is something I'm sure you need to know, I need to know, we all need to know. There is something that we have seen any number of times, heard any number of times, but because we did not comport ourselves as students, we missed. And so, the first question I want you to reflect on or to think about, are you teachable? Are you teachable? Are you incorrigible or teachable? For some of us, we are incorrigible. That means we cannot be, be, be taught. It's impossible. You cannot teach us. Because we are never open to learn new things. What we know, we know. What we don't know, we don't care. But as human beings, because we are dynamic creatures, our intellect is forever open to learning new things. And our experiences are not bounded. We have unbounded access to new and fresh experiences. And each of those teach us something new to improve our lives, to improve our role and our place in the universe and to see more clearly what blinded us for too long. It's important to also recognize as students that we do have blind spots. That means someone else is in my blind spot that is able to see what I don't see clearly to inform. So are you teachable? If you are teachable, then sit down. Then take a distance and learn what God is saying to us at this time. God can use any experience. He may use this pandemic, might even use the national tension and distress right now occasioned by the injustices, racial injustices. God can use anything, but unless we are willing to be taught, unless we are teachable, we will not be able to see what God is unfolding in our eyes. In the first reading, St. Paul said, this saying is trustworthy. He goes on and says a lot, but I'd like to focus on this. He says, we may be unfaithful, but God is always faithful. And those words stuck to me. Because as I go back to the Emancipation Proclamation, or the Proclamation of Independence, I see these words that open our national document. It says, we hold these truths. To be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among them 
and the rights to life, to liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And among them, the right to life, to liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, that is the underlying statement that defines every citizen in this country that you and all of God's children around the world that you are created by God and that you were endowed with certain unalienable rights that means those rights were conferred on you not by a government not by a church not by any organization or any institution but were endowed by the creator himself meaning no one can take them away from you and those rights that no one can take from you include this and others life liberty and the pursuit of happiness now if you want to be honest and true to yourself you will be you will accept this and admit this and there's no shame admitting the truth that as a country we have not been faithful to this underlying document. We have not been faithful to this document. We have not acted and behaved as though we believe what we profess as a nation, that all men, all of God's children are created equal, that they do possess some unalienable rights, the right to life. We have not been faithful to this truth that we profess. And so it's important for us to admit that we have denied these rights to a subset of our citizenry. Our inability to recognize that will be our greatest shame and our greatest tragedy as a people because then we are unfaithful to our own founding document. And so as I read this text, it speaks a new language to me. It says, we may be unfaithful. So recognizing our infidelity to our own founding document that lays the foundation for us as a nation is important. So whether you are religious or not, that doesn't matter here. Whether you are a believer or not, whether you profess any faith or not, that doesn't matter here. But if you believe that you are a citizen of this country, then it does matter. We must recognize that we have been unfaithful. And this is not a time to blame leaders because by my definition of leadership, everyone is a leader. You are responsible for your actions. If you choose to be silent, you're responsible for your silence. But it must be, it's important to recognize what your silence does. Does it contribute to the good, ultimate good of the nation that we're proud of? Or does it undermine the very values of the nation we love and profess as ours? I see from the gospel reading. The Lord Jesus raises, especially for us who have faith, he raises the bar for discipleship. There is something that this Pharisee or this scribe understood that I hope we will understand. He said, you have answered right. That to love God above all things, with all our hearts, with all our understanding, with all our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves is worth more than burnt offerings and sacrifices. That's powerful. Because for some of us, it's so very easy to say words. It's so very easy to give away things. We make sacrifices, burnt offerings, because those are things. 
burnt offerings and sacrifices will be like us being members of a religious group, members of some organization. We have certificates for all of those things. We, we pay our dues every day. Even though we are unable to go to church, we still pay our dues anyway. Those are things that we give away. For some of us, it's so very easy to do those things. What this scribe understood was that the most difficult thing was real love for God that we see in how we treat each other, love for the neighbor. That's the most difficult thing. And for some of us, our spirituality avoids dealing with the other, especially the other who is different than I. Our constitution makes that the foundation, recognition that every human being on the face of the earth is equal. That isn't religious. It doesn't, it's not the Bible. It's our constitution, our national document. And it says all of these people are endowed with certain rights. Now, when you bring these two together, you realize that truth is the same, whether spoken in terms of a national document, people articulate the principles of their own existence together, or as a religious document, people profess their faith in God as a new people assembled by God. The language is the same. And so, loving the other, as scripture says to us, means being able to hear the pain, being able to recognize the struggle, and ultimately being with the person who endures all of this. You remember in Romans chapter 12, verse 15, Paul says to us, to rejoice with those who rejoice, to grieve with those who grieve. And so if your neighbor is in grief, if your neighbor is struggling for their own rights and their own freedom, and you choose to stay silent, that has importance and that has consequences. That's me failing in my responsibility. So at this time, I will invite all men and women of faith, all proud citizens of our great country, to take a step backwards and sit down as students and just behold what is unfolding before our eyes. It is a history of 400 years of inequalities, of slavery, of racism, of segregation, of lynchings, of killings, of economic and social injustices. That's a fact. And unless we are willing to realize that we have been less than faithful to our founding documents, and the shame is ours if we fail to recognize that. As I watch the protests, and I hate to even speak about the riots, I'm troubled, very troubled. But as I watch the protests, I see young black boys, young black girls, young white boys, young white girls coming together, young Asian boys, young Asian girls, young Latino boys, young Latina girls, young people everywhere coming together and saying to us, you have failed us. We don't want to have a world like you have right now. We want a better world and we are willing to work for it. That's what I hear and that's what I see. And my hope is that we would listen to what these young people are saying. That we have failed them for 400 years and they don't want to have a world like we have right now. That's what I hear. Especially as religious leaders and people, we must stand up and make sure we speak truth to one another and we listen to truth from one another. I pray that all those who are choosing to riot instead of protest and destroy our communities these are our communities, these stores, servers, and these businesses. We rely on all of them. You cannot love this country and destroy this country that way. We must all work together constructively as a people and build a nation that we can be proud of. Not just for this generation, but for generations to come. That's my hope and that's my prayer. 
If that's the least you can do, please pray. But by all means, do something at this time. Do something at this time. If you forget everything I said, don't forget this, that you are still the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. Then answer this question. Am I teachable? Can I be taught? The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we pray for our Pope and all the leaders of our church that they may make present the love of Christ visible in every member of his body. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the nations will serve not only their people, but all people, all peoples around the world, especially our seniors, our poor, our unemployed, our prisoners, and those on the fringes of society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our nation, hurting, bleeding, broken by racial injustice, by injustices of all other forms, may listen to the pain crying out to be understood and heard. That everyone who is out there right now protesting may recognize that we hold a responsibility that must not be vanquished to protect our streets, protect our communities, and protect each other because injustice cannot be overcome by more injustice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are in any need, especially those who are sick here in our hospital and around the world, that they, they may know the loving presence of Christ, who is our healer, our comforter, and our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all human life, from, from conception to natural death, will remain sacred for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died, especially Andrea who passed away in New York, and Enrique Yamoka who passed away in Peru, and all those who have died from this virus around this time, that you, O oh God, may grant them rest and bring comfort to the hearts of their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in the heart of your Son, we receive grace and compassion in your mercy. Hear our prayers and help us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Lord, hear our Blessed are the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, which will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters, that my, 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 sacrifice, my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, 
we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, 
Let us now offer each other the sign of that peace. From me to you and to your loved ones, may God's peace rest with you now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. At this point, where we are still unable to participate fully in the, in the, in the Eucharist, let us ask our blessed Lord to come to us and to nourish us spiritually. Most loving and gracious God, we call upon your holy name and we ask you to please visit with your children around the world who are unable to receive you today. Bring them yourself in this sacrament spiritually and may your presence in their lives, in their souls and in their spirits open them up to grace grace that comes from you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Governed by your spirit, we pray, O oh Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in words or in speech, but also in works and in deeds, that we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the winds of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to you for joining us at this Mass. Pray that God may watch over, God may protect you, and that God may keep you safe. Please continue to pray for our country. We are at the precipice of something good, or something really 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 bad I hope that our prayers our reflections our, cho our choice to work together may bring us our best days may help us prepare a world that is safer more hospitable more just more fair for our children and for our children's children God bless everyone who in goodwill is working towards that the Lord be with you. Through the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
we will sing a song to our blessed mother, Queen of the Americas. Immaculate Mary, thy praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria, in heaven the blessed thy glory proclaim, on earth we thy children invoke your sweet name. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria.